Hey guys, Anthony Pichabona here back with another market update. In today's video, we're going to go over where the market went this past week, where we see the market going. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button because I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you're definitely going to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below what you trade. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. First off, we're going to take a look at ES futures on the daily chart. We see that we finished off the day on Friday at 39.47. If you're following along Thursday when I had that long pre-market, you'll see that it did hit TP. We got in long at 3915, entry was 3914, TP was 3979, and the stop was below this previous low here. So it was just over a one to one. And we spiked that and just trended up all day, had explosive move on that Thursday. If I break it down to the one hour chart, we did have this base at the high 38s and then came down and we were trading around just below 3,900 on that market open on Thursday. And then we just off to the races, hit the TP, I got out. And I said in the previous video, I would look to short. I said I would personally look to short from that 3,950 area up into the 3,980 area. And we had a rectangle here. I got rid of the rectangle because I actually think there's a little more upside that can come this week before we resume the downtrend. So, you know, I had this rectangle drawn from right here. And I said, great short opportunity is at about 39.50. And that translates up to about 39.80 to 39.90 on ES futures. I personally didn't get in that short on Friday. So I actually missed the move down. Because again, if we go to the one hour chart on Friday, that would imply getting back short again at 39.80 or 39.90. If I did that and I got back at 39.80 and, you know, we have maybe TP at the support here to the left, we would have hit it on Friday because Friday morning pre-market, we hit 4,000 and then we kind of just trended straight down. So that would have been a good trade. But I personally just had a few scalps on Friday. I didn't have anything major because... I just had been on such a good streak that I was kind of mentally taxed. Wanted to wait till the weekend, do a full review, and then see where we want to do. Friday we sold off. We based made a higher low again at the 39.40 to 39.50 area. Previous lows here at 39.20, other lows here at 38.70s, and then the actual low here at 38.40. So as you can see, bouncing up, higher low, higher low higher low. And I personally think what's possible is we actually push and sweep these recent highs made at 40.10. So on ES futures, I'm actually taking a long on Monday. Or I'm looking to take a long and entry is going to look as follows. 39.50 as an entry. Stop being below this swing low here. So this is where I honestly may not take this trade because it's not a good risk reward ratio. And if I do, it's one of my smaller size ones because I have to respect the risk. The risk is 88 points of downside. That's that's a lot of points. Typically, most of my trades are, are 20 to 50 points of downside. It's 88, so it has to be you know half or one third of my usual size. So because of that, um, you know, my target is actually going to be 40-40. So it's a true one-to-one, -one, you, know, you know, 90 points of upside looking to trade into that resistance to the left. I personally think that it's it's possible we could do that. We could trade up into there early next week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is FOMC. So here's a potential one-to-one -one trade I'm looking at. And you might be asking, well, why is that the target? Uh, target is because simply because we've we've kind of exhausted sellers. We've had a lot of horrible news, and you know we've been resilient. We haven't been putting in lower lows. Um, you know volatility is being sticky. We did have a 10% spike on the VIX on Friday. When that does happen, likely to have a, a green day Monday or Tuesday, and put the call ratio is still very high. So a lot of people are bearish. Sentiment is extremely bearish. So we likely just need to stop out a few more shorts before we potentially continue lower. You know, I, I think an eventual target is this low to the left, possibly going down to the high 3700s. Let's take a look at the news we have coming up this week. Monday, essentially no news. Tuesday, we have Canadian CPI. It's 830. It's not huge for US markets. 10 a.m. is existing home sales. That can move markets a bit. Wednesday, though, is the real, real information. That's FOMC. So we're going to see if they're going to raise rates or not, what's the outlook going to be. So we'll have a pre press conference at 230. A lot of huge volatility there. We'll see how the swings play out there. Major moves. That's pretty much going to be where a lot of fireworks, a lot of volatility is going to be. Thursday morning, we have some news, uh, 4 a.m., 8 a.m. news. And then that's not a huge lot. Unemployment, cl unemployment claims also Thursday, 8.30 a.m. That's a big one. And then Friday, 
we have a lot of news 4 a.m 5 a.m news 5 30 a.m news 8 30 a.m news and 9 45 a.m news so another huge news week <laughs> so expect some chop from monday tuesday but then wednesday big moves and uh, wednesday thursday friday probably a lot of volatility so expect more volatility this week it is what it is so that's why I'm not too confident in a lot of positioning right now. I think we're going to have large swings in both directions this this whole week, in all, in all honesty. HYG, we had that divergence play out. I said personally that we had this divergence here where we were break even, where the SPX was sold off eventually, uh, aggressively. Boom, we got a big push in HYG, big push in SPX and ES Futures. That's how I hit my TP on my long and got out. And then Friday, the market sold off. HYG sold off and we are back to where we are exactly with HYG. So again, from February 21st to March 17th, smart money hasn't moved. Whereas on the SPX, you can see that from February 21st to the Friday, we still sold off aggressively. So that could mean that we have a little more push to the upside before we continue lower. And if we could go and drop the Fib retracement on F SPX, same idea, you'll see that on SPX, we could trade into the 50%. Uh, that's why I have an alert at 4,000. And then 618 would be at 4045. And there is some resistance there. So likely targets, honestly, is the 4,000 on SPX, possibly 4040 as a high before we continue lower. But I'm not going to be getting into any shorts yet because there's really no signals, no reason for me to get in shorts right now. I'll take a look at, you know, once we're at those levels, possibly get into it there. But for now, we're still looking at longs. On the VIX, like I said, 10% up. So we're kind of just chopping, we're, we're flagging and going sideways in this range. It's pretty bullish for the VIX that we're holding at these levels. So usually when we get big spikes in the VIX, we just crash back down. So the fact that we spiked up, came down, spiked up, came down, and we're holding, um, could be preparing for a bigger move because maybe something else is gonna happen uh, this week or next week. Same thing with UVXY. Pushed up, sold off, and then got pushed back up again. So as UVXY goes up, it's volatility. Uh, the, the markets go down. So if we keep holding here and we keep pushing up, we're going to see the market trend lower continuously. So we're just keeping an eye out for that one as well. And the rates we're taking a look at as a one last thing. So 10 year and two year, again, sold off more on Friday, came down more, made almost new lows on the two year recent lows. So we keep seeing these trend down. The only thing that would change this is if Jerome Power comes out and uh, does a 25 basis point hike and then also sticks with what he said he's going to do and say that they're going to continue to keep raising rates because they think inflation is still too high. If this happens, then we'll get a push back up in rates. But I think it's kind of unlikely. I think that they'll probably raise 25 points and signal that they're going to pause. And because of that, I think we'll continue to see the two year and the 10 year fall combined with, with the way the economy is going. And if these things happen, then we could get a relief bounce. You'll also see that they actually printed $300 billion more, the Fed, to bail out the banks, the small banks. And that is back to essentially quantitative easing. So if they continue up with that, then that could fuel a rally to push up even higher and just delay the inevitable crash that's going to come once they kind of stop feeding liquidity. You know, there's a lot of things going around right now. Uh, tough to really call what's going to happen. I still think we're going to have big moves, 100 point swings to the upside, 100 point swings to the downside, chopping around that mid 3800 level to 4000 level in the coming week so i think this week is going to be another range bound week upside max of you know 40 40 downside max of about 3870 to 3850 i think we're going to kind of stay in that range this week but only time will tell we're just gonna have to wait and see look out for the midweek market update i'm going to post a video wednesday night so wednesday that video will be coming out after fomc that's when we'll get more information i'm sure the market will be at one of these extremes of the range market will likely be at the mid 3800 to low 3800 area by Wednesday at night, or it's going to be at that 4000 area. I doubt it's going to be smack dag in the middle after FOMC, but you never know. So let's just take a look and watch. But that's the trade I'm looking out for here for 90 points of upside with about 88 points of risk, a true one one. So one third of my size because it's higher risk. That's going to conclude today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you appreciate it and look out for the next video coming out Wednesday night. See you the next one.